Good evening, everybody. You can take a minute and find your seats. We're going to get started with some candidate introductions. Thank you guys so much for coming out tonight. My name is Brittany Lofthouse. I'm a reporter for the Macon County News here in Franklin. Um, this event is co-hosted by Jesse Stone with the Smoky Mountain News. So we appreciate you guys giving up your night to come out and visit us. Thank you. A couple housekeeping items. Um, if you haven't ever been to the library facility, isn't it beautiful? If you want to know more about the opportunities that the library have, there's a kiosk right here in the middle. I encourage you to stop by. Their programs are there, lots of interesting things they have coming up. Please stop by, grab a flyer, and see what kind of things they have here. The restrooms are located in the lobby once you walked in. So if you missed them um, and need to step out to the bathroom, they're right back there. We're going to start tonight um, with candidate introductions. This is the first series that we're going to be hosting here at the library during this election cycle. Um, a lot of people thought this was kind of early, but there is a primary in Macon County, which is why we're going ahead and having it. So our forum is going to focus on our primary candidates for county commissioner. So we're going to get to that a little bit later. To begin, we're going to have um, an opportunity for every candidate running for office to come up, to introduce themselves to you, tell why they're running, what office they're running for, and kind of a little bit about their experience. Um, it's going to be about three minutes long per candidate. We know that seems kind of short, but we will have future, can future um, forums that will allow um, more chances to see each of the candidates and what office that they're running for. So this is just our first to get it kicked off. Um, sorry, I talk really fast. If that, if so when you see the red paper go Right. So our candidates, you're going to have, once, we're going to give you a yellow card when you're getting close to your time. When the red card comes up, that means your time is up. So just kind of look over here towards us. We're going to have specific questions for the candidates for county commissioner um, that we're going to ask, and then we'll have a chance for audience questions. So even if you didn't submit them and you have questions towards the end that you'd like to ask, we will have an opportunity for that. Right now, we want to give the candidates who are here an opportunity to introduce themselves. We're going to start with the Register of Deeds because we did see them here. So if you're a, currently a candidate running for the Register of Deeds, please make yourself, please make your way up here. <laughs> Sorry. And so these candidates are going to have about two to three minutes to talk to you and tell you a little bit about why they're running. We will start with our incumbent, Todd Raby. Thank you. Thank you. Glad you're all here this evening. It's good to see this big of a crowd. Um, my name is Todd Raby, obviously, and I was elected in 2006. This is my 12th year as Register of Deeds, and I'm running on experience. I have a feel that the experience I've had in the office and the competent staff that I have is all that's required at this time for our office to move forward. The technology that we have to, to move forward when the budget allows. And uh, I want to let you know that's what I'll be running on is my experience. Um, registered deeds is more than just an office to file papers. We register the deeds to your property, the mortgages, vital records, which are marriage license, death certificates, birth certificates, military discharge, which is not public record. We have um, notaries. We issue the notaries to take their oath for their notaries. Um, just more and more detail, and we'll get to that next fall when we have our other forum. But I'd like to thank each and every one of you for coming out tonight, and I ask for your vote this fall. Vote Todd Raby for registered deeds on November 6th. Thank you very much. And candidates, if you want to stick around, if, um, a lot of the candidates, especially like our congressional candidates, that you'll have a minute to, um, you'll have a second to hear from in a minute. You'll have a chance to hear from in a minute. Um, they're going to be in the back, so if you're here for any of those specific races, just know they're going to hang around so that you can ask them other questions um, during the forum. So next we have Linda Herman, who is also running for Register of Deeds. Thank you. I honestly thought this gathering was for those who are in the primary. Uh, you can't vote for Todd or me till November. But I am, um, I've been in the Register of Deeds office every week for 15 years because the Franklin Press, God bless them, loves to print the real estate transactions every Friday in the newspaper, and I've been doing that for them all this time. I love the Register of Deeds office, and I've got a lot of experience 
in my previous work running larger offices than that. I have an education in office management, full degree, and I just love the Register of Deeds. I know that it is the custodian of all of our public records, and we're doing a, a good job. We've got them there. I just think that I can, one of the things I want to look at is, are we providing enough statistics that we can gather from all of these records for our economic growth for Macon County? We're going to grow. We need all the information we can glean to make right decisions for the county. There's another little thing that I have learned that Register of Deeds Office does. He's explained most of it. but. We even have a um, veteran program where veterans can register at the Register of Deeds office. And then I believe the last count was 32 businesses that are offering the veterans discount, but they do need to have their photo ID done at the Register of Deeds office. So thank you, and I would love to have your vote in November. All right, next we'll invite Bobby Cuppers up to introduce himself. Good afternoon. First of all, I'd just like to thank the Smoky Mountain News and the Macon County News for picking up the slack after the loss of the League of Women Voters, which as a civics teacher really upsets me because this is where people find out what's going on. My name is Bobby Cuppers. I'm running for the North Carolina Senate, 50th District. And a lot of people ask why. Well, because it's time. It's time that we started focusing on getting things done. 25 years of driving submarines and another 15 years of coaching football taught me anything. It taught me that working together breeds success and divisiveness will bring failure every time. And right now, at a time when our country and our state and even our county, needs unity more than it ever has. We don't have it. We don't have it. We're going to sit and spin our wheels about where to draw lines on a map, who can vote and who can't, who should vote and who shouldn't. And meanwhile, I sit and I watch our health care system going away, labor and delivery going away, hospitals closing in the rural areas. And I say, who's doing anything about that? And then I watch the education system, the once proud North Carolina education system, erode away because of a misguided idea that we should privatize public education. And then I go into my classroom every day and I look at my students and I tell them how it's supposed to be. And then I have to take another 20 minutes to tell them why it ain't that way. It doesn't have to be that way. We can make things happen. We can make it better. We can make a change. It's time. Why am I running? Because it's time. I need your help. I need your support. I was once told never stand in front of a group of people, Ronnie, and not ask them for money. So yeah, I need your money. <laughs> you go to CuppersForSenate.com, there's a magic little button in the corner. You just push it and follow the instructions. Whatever your heart leads you. But what I really need you to do is to leave this place and walk up to some good friends of yours, and I don't care what persuasion they are, Democrat, Republican, or otherwise. And all I want you to do is look them in the eye and say, you know what? I heard this guy talk. This guy that says North Carolina can be great again. It can be what it used to be. That our education system can be fixed. Okay? Our education system can be fixed. I talked to this guy who said there's no, I listened to this guy, I got you, who, who says there's no problem we can't solve if we work together. That's the goal. That's why I'm running. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much for your time. All right. And is Jim Davis in the room tonight? Senator Jim Davis. Okay. He was invited, but I don't think he was able to make it tonight. So we'll move on to commissioner candidates that you'll be voting for in November, not the primary. Um, so first I'll ask Betty Wallace to come up. Thank you. 
Uh, I'm Betty Wallace. Uh, I'm uh, not running against anybody. Uh, I am running for one of two uh, seats uh, in District 2 uh, for the Board of County Commissioners. Um, I've uh, uh, lived here forever, and if anybody wants to, to know my history in educational administration, uh, government and uh, politics and tree farming, which is my latest iteration. Uh, I have uh, information over here on one of those round tables along with some uh, tree seedlings uh, that I grow on my farm. So please uh, take one of those with you if you're interested. Uh, why am I running for this office? Uh, I've uh, discovered in the last uh, five or ten years really uh, in following uh, the local politics and government in Macon County that I have become more and more uh, dismayed uh, that the socioeconomics of our county has, has spiraled downward. And when we reached uh, level or tier one uh, this year for the fourth year in a row, according to the North Carolina Department of Commerce, uh, I decided it was time to get even more involved and, um, uh, and try to take some action. So I went out uh, and tried to find some of uh, some very good people in Macon County that I knew would be excellent county commissioners to run and uh, couldn't find a single person, not one. So when it came down to the last day of filing, I ended up filing myself because of several reasons. Uh, I, I would like to see far more transparency in our local government. I'd like to see better communications in our local government. Uh, I hear everywhere I go, and I'm in the listening mode right now in the county, People are asking for change. They want change. Uh, and they want equality of opportunity. And but, uh, all of those things are very broad categories. Uh, and I could talk your ear off about every one of them. And there will be time for that later. So I'm uh, glad that to have this series of, of uh, forums uh, be planned. Uh, by the way, uh, three of the county commissioners uh, candidates were in Nantahala last night and had a long, long session that's on U YouTube. So if you want to uh, listen to what we uh, discussed last night in Nantahala, it'll be a real eye-opener for you because Nantahala, being our most distant uh, community, uh, is, uh, has some serious problems over there. And uh, that, that sort of parallel other pockets of, of the county. Uh, but if you uh, want to go on YouTube, uh, uh, Bobby uh, Coggins uh, videotaped that. It's about an hour and a half long. And, and that will get you started getting to know us, those of us who will be, uh, be in the uh, election in November. Thank you very much, and I look forward to uh, meeting more of you and learning more about you and vice versa. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. Okay, next we'll have Ron Haven. Friends, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. I'm going to keep it short and sweet, but basically I think Macon County deserves to have the best that we can have. I remember living here when we were the probably the most looked at county in western North Carolina. We can be there again today. I want to see this place set it back on fire economically, and I know we can all do it. That's why I'm running. I'm not out here interested in putting any property restrictions on you, and I won't vote for them. I'm out here to try to see us to win. Thank you very much. Ronnie Beal. Everybody see me okay? Uh, I was elected in 2006. The first thing I want to say is I appreciate the support I've always received from the Macon County voters. Uh, I've had the opportunity to work, I guess, with 14 or 15 different county commissioners of all parties. We've always had bipartisanship on our board. Uh, they've always been different, but we've always had a majority that seemed 
to want to move Macon County forward. We're doing that today. But we do have some things we've got to work on. Uh, Macon County is one of 30 counties projected that our population will grow between 10 and 20% in the next 10 years. We've got to prepare for that. A lot of those will be of 65 year old or older. I know none in this room are that old, but I'm approaching that. So what are we going to do about that? We have to start looking at our senior citizens. That's one thing. A new senior citizen center. If you know where at one time we thought the old library would be way too big, that's not the case. So some things we've got to be looking at in the future. Economically, we've got to start looking at a workforce. We've got to start rebuilding our workforce in Macon County. We've got to start working closely with the SEC about building our workforce. What kind of workforce do we really need? So some things we've really got to start working on, and we are working on those things. Uh, law enforcement, our schools, we're one of the few counties who has a school resource officer in every school. School safety, we were with the governor on Monday talking about school safety. Macon County is ahead of the curve in a lot of ways. So I'm very proud to serve Macon County. We've worked hard. We have a lot to do on mental health and substance abuse. We're starting a program called No Wrong Door. We've worked very hard on that. We've, you'll hear a lot more about that. Our mental health task force, we were the first one in Macon County to ever have one. Now they're in over half the counties in the state. We continue to work hard on that. It affects every family. It affects every family in this room. It affects every family in this county. The opioid crisis is real. Uh, if you need, need to ask more, just talk to the Sheriff Holland in the back. He'll tell you all more about that. So, I don't know exactly. I forgot. To, I was talking when the yellow card. Does that mean what? You have a minute left. I have a minute. Well, I'll talk. Uh, <laughs> but the mental health situation and the treatment facilities that we have, we've got to do more. I talked to the Secretary on Monday. You'll hear more about the wrong door policy. And what that is, we had a, the most diverse group I've ever seen in one room about four weeks ago. And we're going to, we are going to have a plan. It's going to take money. I told the secretary, we'd like to have a, see a pilot program started on that. So we have a lot to do. I look forward to representing you four more years. And thank you so much for all your support throughout the year. If I can ever be in a help, I don't care what your politics is. We're willing to help you. So thank you so much for all you do. And thanks for being here today. Thank you. All right. Last but not least, our commissioner candidates, Gary Shields. Thank you very much. I want to say thank you to uh, Brittany and, uh, for putting this all together. Uh, my name is Gary Shields, and I'm not going into detail because in September and October we'll have some more information. I'm a um, Vietnam veteran. Uh, I served in Vietnam for 18 months. When I finished my service in Vietnam, I came back and went to college. Uh, and from there, I uh, finished a four-year degree, then I went back and got two master's of, uh, degrees, then uh, I've spent 37 years in education. Mm -hmm. 29 of those 37 years I spent in the Macon County Schools, and 21 of those 29 years I was the principal of Franklin High School, and I enjoyed it very much. And so I know a lot of you through the schools. I just want to say that I am a Maconian. Uh, Politics is important, but you're the important person at being a Maconian. And I just want to say thank you, and I appreciate your vote. You're going to hear that again in September or October. Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to move on to the sheriff's race. Robert Holland. Say 30 minutes? <laughs> Three minutes, okay. Um, I am going to be brief. Uh, there's a lot of people here. Thank you so much. I think this is the largest forum. I've been sheriff for 16 years, and I think it's the largest forum that I've actually been to that people showed up to. So thank you for taking time. It's, it's uh, 
uh, an honor to be standing here in front of you serving as your sheriff. A uh, little bit about myself. Um, I've been with the agency for 27 years. And uh, for those of you that remember me, um, as a young uh, whippersnapper being up here, um, please don't make me let you feel old. Uh, in uh, 2002, I decided to run for sheriff when my sheriff retired. And in 2002, it was really difficult because I looked like I was 12 years old. So I had an uphill battle. And the funny thing is, is this election, nobody's talking about my age. Now, now I've got people saying I've been there too long. So. Um, I could go on. I've been there 27 years. I'm not going to do that. We'll have other forums. I know you're going to be listening to our commissioners. What I would rather do is just tell you this. Here in Macon County, it's not like you see in other places on the national news where they're, they're so bad um, to their officers and so many terrible things are, are happening. I want you to be proud of the men and women that serve not only in your sheriff's office, but in your local police departments and all the different local, state, and federal agencies that work hard every single day of the week here in Macon County. Um, you can be proud of them. I'm honored to serve with them. I'm proud to be the sheriff, but I'm more proud to serve with these uh, men and women. And uh, you, we have something to be very proud of in Macon County. I look forward to having, uh, having the opportunity to talk to you all one-on-one. -on -one. I haven't scheduled any meet and greets. If you'd like to come to one of my meet and greets, you can come to the sunset every single morning at 8 o'clock. I'll be there for breakfast. Um, my home phone number has been in the phone book for 27 years, ever since I've been at the sheriff's office. Feel free to call me. It doesn't matter what time of the day, night, weekends, whatever. Um, I will talk to you as long as my children aren't on the phone and got it tied up. I'll be happy to speak with you. Um, my experience, uh, I, I started out with the department as a, as a volunteer. Um, then I went to be a, a, a detention officer. I uh, was a deputy sheriff, a juvenile officer, a detective, a detective supervisor. Basically, through those 27 years, I've just worked my way up through the ranks of the sheriff's office. I've always been committed to my community. Leaving my community was not an option. This is where my family is. This is where my home is. And this is where I've been committed to. And the only thing that I can promise you is the same thing that I promised you in 2002. If I'm lucky enough to, to receive the honor of being reelected as sheriff, you'll get the very best of me from the first day in office to my very last day in office. And that's the only promise you'll get out of me is you'll get my very best. Thank you and I appreciate it. And Sheriff Holland has a challenger. Is Eric Giles here yet? I think he is going to be. Is this, he made it. Yes, I did. Eric Giles. Hey guys, how are you? I'm glad to be here tonight. Sorry, I'm a little late. I arrested one on my way home. <laughs> so, but I'm Eric Giles. I started my career at Haywood Community College in at the end of 2010. I started work for Robbie Holland in 2011, and I spent almost three years working as a detention officer. I took a road position at another agency, and I have slowly worked my way up the ranks. I've been an investigator. I've been a supervisor. I'm a certified death investigator now. I've had numerous classes in narcotics. I've been the, um, let's see, what else have I done? Okay, I was the witness victim coordinator for Clay County. I was also their domestic violence advocate. Domestic violence is one of the pet peeves I have. I work very hard to stop that every day. I'm also on their narcotics task force for Cherokee County now, and that's one of the big things that we work toward every day is stopping the narcotics coming into our counties. We have a lot of drugs coming in and out of Macon County constantly, and I think it's time for some fresh eyes, fresh ideas, and new things going on instead of just doing things the same way we've always done. But I appreciate y'all coming tonight. If y'all need me, everybody can have a card. They can all have my number. I'm more than happy to give it to you. If y'all need anything, just let me know. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to move on to the congressional candidates. Brian Carpenter, come on up. 
Thank you. Thank you. I was hiding in the back back there. Four years has went by pretty fast. Over the past four years, uh, I've done a lot of things. If y'all remember me, I didn't have no law enforcement experience whatsoever. So far to date, I've been to Haywood County Community College. I went through their BLAT program. I also uh, went through their criminal justice program. Got my associates, numerous certificates and stuff like that. I'm not gonna hold you up with everybody that's here today. If I'm not a candidate on the ballot yet for November. I have to get my signatures since I'm running unaffiliated. If y'all like to do so, contact me. Anybody here can get my number, just let me know. Thank you. Okay, now we'll move on to the congressional candidates. If I can have Steve Woodsmall, please. Thank you all for doing this. I'm Steve Woodsmall. I'm running for Congress because I'm as mad as heck and I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm a retired Air Force officer. And thanks to the vets, thank you for your service, Vietnam veteran. How many vets in here? A bunch of vets. Thank you all for your service. One of the things we learned very early in the military is that if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And I signed up for this to be a part of the solution. We have a lot of problems. One of them is named Mark Meadows. It's time for him to go. We need leadership in D.C. Mark Meadows is a follower. He's a good follower, but he's following the wrong people. He's not following you. He's not following the people in the 11th District. If that's for me, I'm not here. So I want him on, uh, on November the 6th to follow Paul Ryan out down the stairs of Congress and make room for me. That's what we're going for. Um, very quickly, I know we three minutes, right? Gosh, that's just impossible. So um, this is really a job interview for us. Okay, so what you have to do, you have to make a decision just like you're hiring somebody. You are the hiring managers. So what do you look at when you hire somebody? You look at experience, you look at qualifications, you look at education, you look at the potential to succeed in that next position, right? And that's what you've got to do. And, and success is defined in this particular job as getting rid of Mark Meadows in November. I'm the guy to do that. I've taken on much bigger people than him when I was in the military. I'm not afraid to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with him on the debate stage. We're going to call him out for every single thing he's done or not done for the people of this district. I want to represent you. And, um, and, and I'll tell you something else. One of the things you don't do in a job interview is ask somebody how long they've been here. I'm, I've been in North Carolina for five years. I've done a lot in the five years I've been here. Okay, I served all over the world to serve my country. I'm asking you to send me to Washington, D.C. to serve you. I'm a member of the Transylvania County Planning Board. I live in Brevard. I teach at Brevard College. I was third vice chair of the Transylvania County Democratic Party. I had to step down because we're in a primary. I've been on the board of directors of Brevard Little Theater. I've done a bunch of stuff in Brevard in, in, in the five years that I've been here. I want to go to D.C. and have a bigger impact for the people of Western North Carolina. I won't go in, I don't have time to go into all the issues. We have information back there. You can look us up at woodsmallforcongress2018.org. The one thing I will tell you is the number one issue that I'm concerned about is getting the money out of politics because if we don't do that, we're not going to get very far down the road to fix these other issues. And I support House Joint Resolution 48, which is a pro proposed amendment to overturn Citizens United because corporations are not people and we need to get rid of dark money and big money and get rid of the big donors and stop having the worst government money can buy. Thank you. Okay, one minute. Well, I'll just tell you. Um, our campaign has been endorsed in the primary by Gail Mull, who's Mayor Pro Tem of Canton. Um, who else did we get, Ralph? Cecil Bothwell, former city council person in Asheville. 
Equality North Carolina has endorsed us because of our stance on LGBTQ issues. And, and, and people always ask me what that stance is, and it's very simple. Equal protection under the law for everybody, and that includes a woman's right to choose. And finally, the AFL-CIO has endorsed our campaign. And they understand that you don't necessarily have to be a working person to go to D.C. and articulate the issues of working people. They trust me to go. They know I'm the guy that can take care of the issues for them. The biggest labor union in the country wants me to go represent them. I want to go represent you. I'm asking for your support. I want to take Mark Meadows on on May the 9th. It's on. We're going to lock in on that primary target, and we're going to go after him as hard as we can until November and get him out of there. I'm Steve Woodsmall. I appreciate your vote. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for doing this. Thank you. Can we have Philip Price, please? Thank you. Thank you all. My name is Philip Price, and I'm running for the U.S. House of Representatives to serve you, the people of Western North Carolina here in the 11th District. And with your help, I will repeal and replace Mark Meadows. I've been a resident of this district for 34 years, and it does matter how long a candidate's lived in a district because they know the people. Someone who comes in here from uh, San Francisco probably couldn't represent Western North Carolina quite like somebody who's been here for 34 years. I've lived in six counties in this district, including Jackson and Macon County right here. I have been married faithfully to a Jackson County woman for over 21 years and we've been raising three kids and with the help of the North Carolina public school system. My children have uh, exceeded. Uh, my oldest son is a honor student, chemical engineer at NC State. My daughter is a junior at the North Carolina School of Science and Math, one of the top 25 highest schools in the country. And my 12 year old is a school, is a school in a new STEM school in Marion. So we're very thankful for our children. Michelle and I have been building a small lumber recycling business for over 18 years where we take down old barns and farmhouses and anything that has valuable old growth lumber in it and we make furniture and flooring and paneling and really cool stuff out of old wood. So we know we've been recycling and doing our part to recycle and, and save the trees of this district uh, for 20 years now. I've been on this campaign for over 13 months now. And I've put uh, a lot of rubber on the roads of Western North Carolina, over 21,000 miles on my truck so far. I've been having listening sessions and listening to the people and what concerns the people of Western North Carolina. What are the issues at the table in your house, not what's going on in Washington, not what are the problems in Washington. And I've developed a platform that has four legs to it. Those four legs are expanding health care to everyone through a single payer system. It'll create many, many jobs. It will be a boom to our economy right here in Western North Carolina. The second leg of my platform is expanding public education. We need to make sure our teachers are getting paid. We need to make sure that we're taking care of kids before kindergarten and all the way through a, a two-year community school and tech school. That will produce jobs. For every dollar we spend on education, we get the taxpayers get back almost $7 in return. It's an investment in our future. We need to invest in green energies, the third leg is the environment. Our environment here in Western North Carolina is so important to us because tourism is the number one industry in Western North Carolina and it's because of our beautiful environment here. Mark Meadows wants to reclassify areas like the Blue uh, Valley up in making, uh, you know, on the south end of this county and so he can bring his donors in and cut down the trees and make a quick buck. We're not going to allow that to happen. We've got to take care of our environment and produce green energy jobs right here in Western North Carolina. The fourth leg is infrastructure. We know we've got to get our roads and bridges up to speed, but we need to make sure that we have access to high speed broadband internet to everyone in rural Western North Carolina because it is the future of economic growth and the future of education and healthcare. So it's healthcare, it's education, it's the environment, and it's the infrastructure. That's hometown, local issues that I'm going to fight for for you right here in Western North Carolina. My name is Philip Price. It will be an honor to serve you on the floor of the House of Representatives, and you can be sure that when it's time for a vote to be cast, that I'll be thinking about you, the people in Macon County, people in Clay, 
Graham, Cherokee, Swain, Jackson, Haywood, Transylvania, Burke, Madison, Yancey, Mitchell, Caldwell, and McDowell counties. There are 16 counties in this district and 6,000 square miles, and I have been putting the rubber to the road. Thank you so much for your vote and your support. All right, last but not least, Scott Donaldson. Hi, my name is Scott Donaldson. I'm a, a urologist in uh, Henderson County, uh, Chief of Staff of the Hospital. I've been there for uh, 16 years. And I want to thank you for inviting us to your county meeting because some form, I think, us congressional candidates are kind of selling up the place. Uh, this is a beautiful conversation you have. I, I truly believe that Local politics is the most powerful form of politics there is. In fact, about 10 years ago, I was an unaffiliated, and I just got a bird in my saddle that I wanted to run for county commissioner. And I got 3,007 signatures, so whoever that you know, running, it's, it's a difficult undertaking. And I really ran on a number of things, but one of them was soccer fields, that we needed proper soccer fields in Henderson County. Coolest thing happened, I was standing in the rain, on the passing out on the polling, and this guy, I tell him I'm Scott Donaldson, this guy walks up, feels his chest, pulls out a piece of paper and said, yeah, my neighbor told me I ought to vote for you. And that was one of the neatest things, the power of local politics. And I, at the end of the day, we have uh, soccer fields now in Henderson County. I didn't win that election, but we pushed the ball forward. And I think in many ways, all of this politics pushes the ball forward. And I believe as we look at the national issues, I believe you cannot build in the negative. I believe that you cannot build anything by, you don't define yourself by what you're against. You define yourself by what you're for. So you paint a picture of where you think we ought to be and you figure out ways to get there. The primary reason I'm running is because I am a physician. And in my office every day I see people without access to health care. And I will tell you that when people do not have access to health care, whether they don't have health insurance or if they have a fifteen dollars or $20,000 health care deductible that they must pay first, that is a perceived lack of access. And either way you define that, when there is no lack of access, people die. And that's just a fact. And I've seen nurses refuse, retired, or nurses who are uh, no longer working with us, no longer have health insurance. One in particular, she waited until her breast cancer was almost coming through the skin because she knew that she did not have health insurance and she did not want that bill placed on her. And she knew the story. She was an operating room nurse. I knew her. Had she called me, we would have put her in the process. But we have to make sure that every child born to this nation, to the last breath you breathe on this planet, that you have continuous health care coverage. When people say we have a broken health care system, I would tell you that assumes that we have a health care system. We don't have a health care system. We have a get what you can and hold on to it. And I further believe that we need sensible gun laws. We're not going to take anybody's guns. We want to make sure that we have holding periods and we close these loopholes. 90% of the nations, 90% of this nation wants that to be done. We should be able to get that done. And I believe, we, we all agree, that we should have better schools. If you talk to all of us amongst us, these congressional candidates running, and I am running as a Democrat, we, we all agree on these things. Now, it's not exactly the same, but we, we kind of rhyme. And I believe in medical marijuana. You guys are, are up against a uh, crisis, I know, of the opioids. This is what I deal with in my hospital as chief of staff. Uh, and I'll tell you, we're making a difference in that. And I love the fact that you've got this rehab and mental health institution because, you know, if we all shake our family trees, something's going to fall out. And uh, <laughs> that's just the way it goes. And so we need to care for these people. We got sold a bill of goods with these opioids. I can tell you that a physician. The physicians are going to have to lead the way out because in, in many ways I believe they got us here. Medical marijuana, while it's not the cure, I will tell you it's a great uh, option. I can tell you right now it's being used by people like me who will tell folks, mm, you don't need two pretzels, one pretzel will be fine. <laughs> These opioids are a problem. Did you give me a red sign? I'll give you a yellow. Give me a yellow sign. My name is Scott Donaldson. I'm a Democrat. I'm running uh, for Congress. And I believe if we're going to uh, make this nation run as efficiently as this wonderful community. We built this beautiful library. This is beautiful. I'm jealous. I'm Henderson County. Our library is nothing like this. Uh, we have to seize those things that are common to us, that we all agree on, the common good and the general welfare. I'm Scott Donaldson. Uh, I'd be happy to talk with you, but I think you'd do better 
having a county commissioner of a debate. Thank you very much. Is there any candidates that we have overlooked? So, I'm so sorry, but any other candidates? Hey there, <clears throat> I'm Clifton Ingram, and I'm running as the Libertarian against Mark Meadows. Uh, there won't be a primary, but um, thanks to the, the Democrats. If you like uh, big government, you should vote for one of them. Um, if you like fiscal conservancy, I would say vote Republican, but that's not necessarily the case. Um, as Libertarians, we're known as uh, fiscally conservatives, and we hate taxes, I mean, from our, from our soul. It's like this gut feeling, and we love the free market. That's the, uh, the distinguishing characteristics of libertarians. Now, we're a small party, but we are a nationally recognized party, and um, there's a, a big group of people that call themselves independent that are forced to vote for Republicans and Democrats all the time. Well, I'm the first libertarian in 10 years now in uh, District 11 running, so now you've got an opportunity to vote for libertarians. I suggest you go check out their platform. I know uh, they get a bad name sometimes through the... Um, the mass media and such, but we're anti-war, um, and I, I think we're the only party that's anti-war, and out, outwardly so. Uh, the war machine's costing us trillions of dollars, and um, it's a big business. And um, I, I watched 9-11, I watched it happen from my hotel concierge lounge. I was a, a software consultant for IBM at the time, and I flew into Newark, New Jersey the day before 9-11, so um, lucky to be alive. And um, and I saw some things in that, in that news broadcast when that Building 7 was falling. And you should look up uh, Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. That's something you should look, look at. Um, another thing you should look at is, um, I mean, how our money is spent. Right now, you're giving these guys, these Republicans and Democrats, a uh, blank check. You're saying, here, go spend our money. And then when you have a trifecta, you got the Senate and the House of Representatives and the, the President all one party. They just go crazy spending, and Republicans, you're, you're just as guilty as Democrats, I'm sorry. So um, I want to give the power back to the people, and uh, I think in an information age, we should be able to choose where at least a percentage of that money is spent, and that would be an adequate check and balance. Right now, this blank check system it isn't working, so if you vote for me, I'm going to try to make that happen if I can. Now, another thing we believe in is free trade, and uh, we need to lessen regulations, we need to uh, lessen tariffs, we need to lessen taxes. Another thing that we need to do is uh, instigate some kind of term limits. These guys have been in there forever. Uh, Mark Meadows, I mean, we've paid him a, a million dollars now. Is, it, is he worth it? I mean, it, uh, a lot of people really like Mark Meadows. I haven't met the guy uh, personally. Uh, Democrats hate him, obviously. But um, I think less government, more freedom, and individual liberty. I mean, that's where my party stands for, and that's where I stand for. I think we, we need... Uh, to let our nonviolent offenders out of jail. I mean, we're hogging up our court system. We put more people in jail per capita in this country than any other country in the world. And uh, I mean, if you believe in freedom, if you believe in liberty and individual freedom, then vote libertarian and uh, let's get some, some real change happening. Um, another thing we do, uh, like uh, Mr. Donaldson said, we need to uh, free our most versatile crop, and that's uh, cannabis so that our farmers have something to grow and we can make things out of. I'm a, a general contractor, North Carolina general contractor, and um, people in Asheville are building out of hemp, hemp creek. It's one of the most versatile crops known to man. And um, I mean, plywood is not rocket science, it's glue and pulp. I mean, if we can save some trees, then I mean, I'm all for it too. So let me read something. There's a book that's not in this library. In fact, it's not in any of the libraries. It's called The Emperor Wears No Clothes and it was written by Jack Herrera. And it has a $100,000 guarantee that everything in it is true, including uh, the 13 seconds in Congress where marijuana made blackies feel like whiteies. That's why it's been illegal for all this time. So prohibition does need to end. The, um, and this, ca this came from the book. It says, if all fossil fuels and their derivatives, as well as trees for paper and construction, were banned in order to save the planet, reverse greenhouse effect, and stop deforestation, then there's only one known annually renewable natural resource that is capable of providing the overall majority of the world's paper and textiles uh, needs and the world's transportation, industrial, and home energy needs while simultaneously reducing pollution, rebuilding the soil, and cleaning up the atmosphere all at the same time. And that is the substance, the same one that did it before, cannabis, marijuana. Thanks. I'm running for Congress as the Libertarian Clifton Ingram. Thanks.
I guess it's a good thing that every candidate we invited showed up to take up so much time. So thank you guys for staying with us. Now we're going to start the actual forum part of...